Welcome back to the Flipped Classroom. Today's topic is simplifying radicals with variables. Example number one, the square root of 18, x cubed, y to the fourth. Now, if I just said the square root of 18, most people would be pretty darn good at that. They'd say I need a perfect square and not a perfect square. So we're gonna do something very similar. We're gonna start with the 18 and we're gonna say, okay, the two numbers I can think of that multiply to 18 are nine and two. 9 is the perfect square, and 2 is not. And now I want to do the same thing for the x cubed term. I want to break it into a perfect square and not a perfect square. Well, very simple. I'm going to say that's the square root of x squared and the square root of x. Now, why is that true? Well, when we multiply, we're going to add the exponents. So this 2 and this 1 total the 3 that we're looking for. And remember, we said it's a square root, so we want to break this to a perfect square. I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. y to the fourth, remember I want squares, so I'm going to say is really y squared and y squared. Together, when I multiply them, I get y to the fourth. Now I'm just going to go through and simplify everybody I know. Well, the square root of 9 is the number 3. I'm going to leave radical 2. I don't know that answer. The square root of x squared, well, the square and the square root undo each other, so that just becomes x. This one's not squared, so that's going to stay under the radical. This square and square root undo each other, so that becomes y. And the square and square root undo each other, so that also becomes y. Notice, when I take their square root, they come outside of the radical. If I don't know them, they stay inside the radical. Lastly, I'm just going to take all the terms I have outside the radical and put them together. So I'm going to say I have a 3 and x, and a y times a y is a y squared. Inside the radical, I'm going to leave everybody who's there, so I'm going to keep in the 2 and the x. And you've got your final answer. So again, very similar to what we've been doing. Just take your time with these variables. We want 1 to be a perfect square, so you want to see the number 2, and anybody who's left over to be itself there. Let's try another example. Example number two, the square root of negative 36, x squared, y to the fifth. Now, um, 36 right off the bat is a perfect square, so I'm not going to break it down. I'm just going to rewrite it as the square root of 36, and I'm going to take that negative and rewrite it as the square root of 1. Let's jump to our x's. Again, I need a perfect square, and it is a square, so I'm going to rewrite this as the square root of x squared. And I only need that one because it matches up. And lastly, I'm going to say y to the fifth is really y squared, y squared, and just y. So again, how did I get that? Well, 2, 2, and 1 make a total of 5. And I'm breaking it down into those 2's because I need perfect squares. And lastly, I'm just going to go through each of my square roots and see which ones I know. So again, I know the square root of 36, that is the number 6. I know the square root of a negative 1, that becomes the imaginary number i. The square root and x squared cancel each other, and that becomes an x. The y, the square here, and this radical cancel each other, that becomes a y. Again, this radical and that squared cancel, and that becomes a y. And lastly, nothing cancels on that last term, so I'm going to leave that as radical y. One more final step, I'm going to put any of my like terms out front together. So I've got 6i, an x, and a y squared, and I'm left with radical y. So remember the trick is, you're always looking for a perfect square and not a perfect square. Let's try another one. Alright, example 3. I've got a 2 out front this time. Square root, 27, x to the 6th, y to the 7th, z. Now, if you're feeling brave and you think you've got this down, pause it, try it on your own, and compare with my answer. Remember, this 2 out front is just going to come along for the ride, and we're just going to carry that down. So here goes nothing. I'm going to leave that 2. I'm going to break 27. Um, 9 times 3 is 27, and 9 is a perfect square. x to the 6. Remember, I'm breaking them down into 2s because it's a square root. So I'm going to have 1x squared, that's 2, another x squared, that's a total of 4, and another x squared, that gets me a total of 6. 
I'm going to continue on the line below here. I need a y to the seventh, so I'm breaking them into twos. That's a y squared, a y squared, so I'm at a total of four. Another y squared, so again that's a two, four, six, and I need one more to get me to seven. So I'm going to leave that one in the radical. And lastly, I have just one little z hanging out, and I'm just going to leave that in the radical. All right, once they're all broken down, you're just going to go through and cross off the ones you know. So I'm just going to leave my 2 in front. Square root of 9 becomes a 3. I don't know the square root of 3. I'm going to leave that alone. The x squared and square root cancel to make an x. Cancel again there to make another x. Cancel again there to make another x. The y squared and square root cancel. So I got a y, another y, another y, and then I can't break these last two down. So last step, I'm going to put everybody who's not in a radical out front. So I've got 2 times 3, that's a total of 6. I, whoopsie. I've got x, x, and x. x times x times x makes x cubed. I've got y times y times y, that's a total of y cubed. And then anything else, I'm going to stick under the radical together. So that's the 3, the y, and the z. Now again, perhaps you're feeling pretty confident thinking this is easy. Maybe you're not. That's okay, too. If you think you can come up maybe with a different method or a quicker method to get to our final answer, we want you to jot that down and bring that idea to class with you tomorrow. There are certainly other ways to do this. This is just one way that we think works best. But again, if you think you've got another method, write it down and share that idea with us tomorrow in class. All right, the square root of 2x to the 6y times radical square root 8xy. Now, we've already multiplied radicals in class, so remember, you're just going to multiply things outside together and things under the radical together. So I would multiply first before I attempt to clean it up. So when I multiply these, I've got 2 times 8, which is 16. I've got x to the 6 times x, and remember, when you multiply, add the exponents. And I've got y times y, which of course is y squared. All right, now just take it, your time, and break it down. Square root of 16, I don't need to break that down, I know that one. x to the 7th, I want to break them up into squares. So I've got x squared, x squared, x squared. So that's a total of 2, 4, 6, and I need one more for x to the 7th. Oops. And then I need a y squared. Lastly, square root of 16 is 4. That becomes an x, x, x. Can't touch that there. We'll keep her in the radical. And that becomes a y. So my final answer looks like when I put these together, 4x cubed y square root of x. All right, don't quit on me now. I've got a few more different types of examples for you. Um, so number four, the square root of x to the sixth, y to the fifth, all over 36. Now, remember from dividing here, we can really rewrite this as the square root on top of x to the sixth, y to the fifth, divided by the square root of 36. Now I'm just going to take my time and break down the top and the bottom. So again, x to the sixth, looking for perfect squares. So I've got x squared x squared, x squared, that's a total of 2, 4, 6. y to the fifth is going to be y squared, y squared, and just a plain old y. It's 2, 4, and 1 to make 5. And I actually know the square root of 36 is the number 6. So I would say my final answer as I clean this up here, oops, switch colors, this becomes an x, 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 y, and y. I'm going to leave that one as a radical y all over 6 for a final answer of x cubed y squared radical y all over 6. Okay, just a couple more to go here. This time I'm going to switch from square roots to cube roots. So recall we just talked about perfect cubes in the last video. Um, our first perfect cube, well of course 1 is because 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. My next perfect cube is 8. 
And these are, you know, ones you want to commit to memory. And why is eta perfect cubed? Well, remember, it's just 2 times 2 times 2. The same number multiplied 3 times. Um, if I went 3 times 3 times 3, the next perfect cube would be 27. If I did 4 times 4 times 4, the next perfect cube would be 64. And let's go one more, 5 times 5 times 5, which gets me a total of 125. So again, I would try to commit these perfect cubes to our memory bank. Alright, so now we're not looking for perfect squares anymore because I don't have a square root. This time, I have a cube root. And notice the index of 3 up by my root. So again, I don't want to break it into perfect squares. I need to look for perfect cubes. Alright, now remember our list of perfect cubes. 8 happened to be one. So I'm going to say cube root of 8. And notice I'm keeping that cube root here. Make sure that's a 3. And now I'm not looking for perfect squares again. I'm looking for perfect cubes. So I need to break them up into th pairs of 3. So I'm going to say it's the cube root of x cubed. And I think I can go another one of those, cube root of x cubed. So again, right now I'm at a total of 3 and 3, which makes 6. And I need to get to 7. So I'm going to also throw in the cube root of just x. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my y to the fourths. And again, I'm making them perfect cubes. So I'm going to say the cube root of y cubed. And then the cube root of just y. So very similar to what we did with the square roots, but just watch that root. I'm breaking them all into threes this time instead of twos. So as I go through, hopefully we've got the cube root of 8 is the number 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The cube and the cube root here are going to cancel and make an x. They're going to cancel again there and make an x. Not going to cancel on this next one here, so I'm just going to rewrite it as the cube root of x. These are going to cancel and make just a y. And again, not going to cancel on the last one, so I'm going to leave that as the cube root of y. Lastly, I'll just put my outside terms together. So I've got a 2. This makes an x squared. And of course, a y is outside. And then my cube root, it looks like I'm left with an x and a y. All right, stay with me. I got just two left for you tonight. Uh, let's try another cubed root. I've got the cubed root of negative 16 x y cubed z to the fifth. Okay, now 16 may be a perfect square, but that's not going to help us this time because, again, we're looking for perfect cubes. Now, you notice I wrote the cube list off to the side here. 16 is not a perfect cube, but one of these numbers times another does get us to 16. So hopefully you're thinking 8 and 2. Now, there's one small bear trap here. I don't want you to think that there's an i involved, even though you see a negative. And here's why. Perfect cubes are allowed to be negative. Think about this for a moment. I can get negative 8 if I multiply negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. This gets me positive 4 times the negative 2 gets me a negative 8. So you're allowed to have perfect cubes that are negative. Unlike perfect squares, those have to be two positive numbers. So, here we go. Let's break our perfect cubes down. So again, 16, I'm thinking, is going to be negative 8 and positive 2. So I'm going to say the cube root of negative 8 and the cube root of 2. Notice they multiply to negative 16, and this is a perfect cube. Just breaking down my pattern, x already is less than 3. This exponent 1 here is less than 3, so all I can really do is write the cube root of x. y cubed is a perfect cube, so I'm going to rewrite that as the cube root of y cubed. And lastly, this 5, I'm going to break down into a cubed, so y, I'm sorry, the cube root of z cubed, and then I'm going to have 2 left over, so the cube root of z squared. So these exponents total that 5 again. All right, all we got to do is simplify, and we're almost home. Cubed root of 8 is 2, and the cubed root of negative 8 then is negative 2. I don't know the cubed root of 2, so we'll leave that. I don't know the cube root of x, nothing cancels. This cube root and cube do cancel, so that's just a y. 
those cancel, that's a Z. And then this one, again, not big enough to cancel, so I'm going to leave that as the cubed root of Z squared. Putting my outside terms together, I've got negative 2YZ, and then everybody else is in the cubed root. So I've got my 2, my X, and my Z. All right, well, we've made it to the last example. Um, take your time, pause me, try to do it on your own, and compare in a few moments. So again, because it's a fraction, I'm going to take the cubed root of just the top and the cubed root of just the bottom. Again, I'm just saying I don't want perfect squares. I'm looking for perfect cubes. So I can break the a up into the cubed root of a cubed and the cubed root of a cubed. That's a total of 6. b, I'm going to do the cubed root of b cubed and then the cubed root of just plain old b. And that's a total of 4. 3 and 1 make 4. On the bottom, I'm going to say I or not an I. And hopefully you're thinking no I because you can take the cubed root of a negative. And does 27 itself happen to be a perfect cube? Well, I think it does. I believe that's negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. So I'm just going to cancel that all together and put a negative 3. All right, lastly, I'm just going to cancel what I can. Uh, cubed, cube, root, cancel. That's an A. Cubed, cube, root, cancel. That's another A. Those cancel again. That's a B. And the cube root of B all over negative 3. So cleaning that up, I've got an A squared and a B outside. Cube root of B all over negative 3. Well, folks, definitely not the easiest topic we've done this year, but take your time, and I think you'll do fine. Um, again, if you saw a quicker method, make sure you bring that idea to class with you tomorrow and let us know about it. Also, don't forget to jot down the title of the uh, song that you heard in the beginning, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.